Hope you're having a good day, everyone. So, I'm taking a little bit of a break from reviewing all the Ninja Turtles movies to talk about, I'd say, my most anticipated movie of the year, which is not saying much because of this virus, uh, Capone. And it's more around the story around this movie rather than the story itself. And I've seen a few reviews of this and read a bit, and it seems like a lot of people are on the same board as me when they really sympathize with this director and root for him. Now, I'm sure you've probably heard of this, but the director, Josh Trank, he's had a bit of a tough life in the Hollywood directing business. His debut, Chronicle, from 2012, I really love. It was so fierce and honest and funny until it got tragic and terrifying and just it's scary how realistic it really was. And honestly, I'm in a bit of a minority, and I really did not hate his Fantastic Four reboot. I was far from recommending it, but still, I've seen way worse, including some way worse superhero films. I could name a few, but a lot of them have positive reviews. But my point is, I felt for him to get blacklisted by Hollywood for that film, I really hoped that he would come back from it, because Chronicle really showed how he really had an apt for filmmaking and he seemed to really love the craft. So. To see him come out with this, I really had high hopes for it. But the thing is, I also knew as a critic I had to give a fully honest review afterwards. Otherwise, if I give something that's too loving, I'll regret it later. So with that being said, let's talk about Capone. So I'd be very surprised if you didn't know who Alphonse Capone was. Al Capone used to be the most notorious gangster in the world, but in 1931, of all things, he was sentenced to jail for income tax evasion. I guess there were a lot of crimes he did, but kind of like the U U.S.'s president, there were so many people backing him, behind him, catering to him, that the police weren't able to get anything concrete. Or if they were, then it, they weren't able to actually touch him with it. But he spent a very long time in prison as a result. I remember I went to Alcatraz once, and I saw Al Capone's photo on a row of other prisoners. He was the only one who was grinning. It, was, it took place in 1934. But that being said, Prison wasn't easy to get by for him, and that's pretty obvious when you see him played by Tom Hardy at his mansion in Long Island. Like, boy, he is really, really broken. Like, more broken than Adam Sandler's character Howard Bryant in Uncut Gems. Maybe even twice as much. In prison, he was apparently diagnosed with syphilis, and his family, including his wife, played by Linda Cardellini, who's still with him, they're all just trying to help him out, but there are people from the FBI who are secretly monitoring him, and we're not exactly sure why, but we suspect it's because, well, he was Chicago's most notorious gangster, and he's he's out now in his old mansion. Should keep an eye on him, right? But you see this person played by Tom Hardy who's as pale as a corpse, and you just, you want him to be left alone, even if there were a lot of things you probably heard about that he did. Apparently there were like 30 people who died under his command. When a movie tries to get you to sympathize with someone who really doesn't deserve sympathy according to their history, sort of like how Charlize Theron played Eileen Warnos in Monster, the world's first female serial killer. I'm trying my very best not to lose my train of thought as I say these things. Well, you have to have a very good performance, and Tom Hardy is very good. I. I thought he was the best person possible to play Eddie Brock in Venom. There are a lot of other things he's been in, but not real, not very much that I've seen, I'm afraid. But honestly, he really puts this movie on his shoulders. And I really like his gravelly gangsta accent. I've heard that some people got kind of tired of it, but if you ask me, it's more along the lines of how often we're with him rather than how much we listen to his accent. I always believed it. And it's not just his accent that deserves some praise. Like, anyone can put this sort of thing together, big boy. <laughs> he also has to really be tremulous. He has to really be frank, but he also has to just, like, mutter, like, as things really get bad for him. He must have worn lenses because I've never seen eyes that bloodshot before. He feels like it would be better for him to just be put out of his misery. And the people around him, I could see that they were thinking that would probably be the case. But still, this deteriorating man is like, my father, my husband, my, my cousin, my brother, you know? Tom Hardy gives a very good performance, and this is a very, very well-shot film, including in the opening monologue, when it looks at both the mansion and all these statues, it's kind of like they're mocking our protagonist, saying, you had it all, 
but now you don't anymore and you'll never get it back. I also like how this movie is very unpredictable and different. You never really know when this Al Capone is going to snap or stay somewhat sane. You don't really know where these hallucinations that he ends up having due to his condition are really going to lead. When he is forced to stop smoking cigars, you really can't tell if this is going to make him better or if this is going to make him go off. Kind of like all the best shocking horror movies out there, there is a scene that involves a knife and some slashing stabbings that are both up close, sound horrible, we hear screams of massive agony, we imagine being that exact person. The movie's atmosphere kind of makes you wonder if this Al Capone is conflicted about whether he really feels guilt or he wants things to go back to the way they were back when he was untouchable, or if there's a combination of the two. I bet it's a combination of the two, but you get my point. But there are some noticeable flaws. One is that with all of these other side characters that are taking care of him or keeping an eye on him, I did kind of want there to be more of an exploration of them. And instead, we're often just with Capone as he deteriorates, and that is fine, but sometimes I felt that there could have been a little bit more to explore, such as a son that Al never told his current wife about, who is now grown up and a, just a little younger than me. And in the opening monologue, it says that it is the last year of his life, which kind of foretells a lot of the film even though it didn't need to. Not everyone is really a complete scholar of Al Capone, and it's sometimes kind of good to surprise the audience a little bit more or keep them up to date. It's true that everyone knows Al Capone is dead by now. If he weren't, he'd be 121 years old right now, but I often like it when movies stay a little bit more anonymous in where they're heading. The timeline of this movie is also a little bit unclear. The monologue says that he was in prison in 1931 and then he got out a decade later, but there must have been a little bit more time since then because later on we hear that Hitler has died, which was obviously 1945, which is four years after you do the math. You're, I'm, I don't think you're stupid and you know what I'm talking about. But still, I was really close to recommending this, but at the end it resorts to this technique of storytelling that I really don't like, especially in the climax. I basically feel that I know where director Josh Trank was going with this, and from what I've read, he's really happy with this film and is okay with the reviews it's gotten, and I'm really rooting for him to make a comeback. I think that he did a really good job filmmaking-wise with this. It's a beautifully shot film, it's unpredictable, it's also not too overlong, which I really like. It's just that, I guess, it could have been in need of a few different story changes and a little bit more development. I would say that this is just an, a solid film. My grade for Capone is a mixed C+. So Capone may or may not be worth seeing. I'd say that it is unique enough, so I'd say you could probably go see it if you're interested. I don't wholeheartedly like recommend it to the mass public because it's just based on how much I enjoyed it, but I'm really glad that uh, Trank was was really delighted in how this film turned out, and I'm looking forward to see what he comes up with next. So thanks for watching my review. If you've seen Capone or are going to see it, I would love to know what you think, and I'll see you soon.